That sounds good. All right, all right, all right. Gentlemen, welcome to Worry Week. Worry Week. Worry Week. Pavel's from the pit. Live fucking podcast. This is a, this is a live one that we're doing. Uh, we went to... Uh, uh, we went to digital, and we're still in digital because of uh, the whole COVID thing. Uh, but uh, once in a while, we got a brother that comes in, and we do them live. So, Brent, welcome, man. Thank you very much, Sam. I don't give a fuck about COVID right now. Ah, I'm yeah. all over it. I'm all yeah, over it. We're, we're, we're good, man. All right, so <laughs> uh, if you don't give a fuck about COVID, you need to hit the mic with almost your lips on the mic. So I will. Uh, uh, you know, these are COVID-free fucking mic. Anyway, gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to this podcast. Uh, what are you week 61? There we go. All right. So, uh, we're going to talk with Brent about his experience, uh, one of a kind fucking podcast. I'm excited. So Brent, what, uh, you know, what was it that you started getting introduced to the message of warrior and what brought you? I know at one point you went to warrior wealth, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. And then what, what brought you to warrior, man? You know, so ultimately where I first started out with this about a year ago yeah. with big money marketer. So oh yeah. Okay. The okay. event up there at the Pasea and that's ultimately was like my first experience into an actual game with you guys like yeah. i'd paid attention to what you were doing for maybe like six months ahead of that just seeing some videos and stuff like that and i kept on having this whole thing where it was just like God, what am i like what am i missing with this like i felt like it was like oh i'm all good i don't necessarily need to hear yeah. like i don't need to go do anything and then that event was there and i'm like okay i'm gonna go do that like because you know how it is like you probably get a lot of guys who are just on the edge for a long time right and then they finally get to the stage where they're like Okay, I got to do that. And so I went and did that. And then I went down and did the intensive of the marketing. Yeah, the thing. two days yeah, in the, the office. Oh, got it. In got the it. office. And so that was just a cool experience. And you came in on the Friday afternoon mm. at the end of that thing. And you had us, you guys had just put out a new video about Warrior Week that you guys had put together. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and then at the end of that, you were like, hey, text me if you want to be in, say yes or no, one way or another. And I texted you and I was like, no. Like, I, I don't want to do this. Um, and I don't even really, I can't really tell you why. It just, like, it just didn't feel right. And I right, think you right. were like, answer it in your heart. And I answered it in my heart, and the answer was no. But then I just kept on, like, getting emails and getting messages. And it was just like they'd hit me at these times. It was like I felt like, you know, the autoresponder that's sending me emails yeah. knows when I'm sitting there going, like, fuck, stuff's not going right. It's like not going the way that I want it to go, and so ultimately, I forget when we, you and I had a conversation. Maybe it was well, I think the- I think yeah, building upon that, so you come to the big money marketer. Uh, obviously, you come in from okay, these guys are doing good. I, I want to learn, um, and I want to I want to do right. You know that what, what these guys are doing, and then uh, you say no because you're there for business. And then I think the opportunity showed up where it, it was uh, it was to join the mastermind group of business. So you're like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna go, and it was a big, big investment, right? And so you're like, you're not playing small. You're like, okay, I'll pay the big bucks. I'll play with the big boys, and then, uh, and then I don't know if you had your conversation. I think you had your conversation with me yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, like all that is good, but the gate is worry week. Like literally, uh, not that you have to, not that you need to, but so as long as you want to, or else, you know, this whole thing, you're 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 just not gonna play. Full, uh, full flight. So we did have a conversation. I remember it was uh, it was an hour and a half conversation or so. Um, and you did decide to come in. And one of the things that we focused on was uh, just man, like trying to get this business up and running. You had multiple businesses done, but there was this mm-hmm. one particular one that you keep you kept fucking like hitting hitting your head against the wall. But I particularly remember uh, acknowledging one thing about you in that conversation that like fuck, man, it take massive amount of balls. For you to be persistent and for you know two years spend over three hundred fucking thousand dollars and stay over nine hours with vendors and you know call them every week and hang they would hang up. I remember you telling yeah. me that call them every week they would hang up, call them again, they would hang up, call them again and t- until like so so much persistence because you believe that this is this is something that you were passionate about. This this is gonna work um, and ultimately uh, it's just not responding like as if. As if the people you wanted to play with, like, they were not players. You know, I don't know if that was the case, because ultimately what I was looking for with that business, yeah. and ultimately I think what drove me to Warrior was I was looking for something that would test me. Mm. Because the regular business that I started in 2003, it wasn't testing me anymore. It was a point where, 
like you just get bored of stuff after a while. And so I was like, what is something that I'm actually genuinely interested in that will put me in a spot where it's like, this is going to be really, really fucking hard. Right. And so I look at that and that's what I ended up starting that business with, which was an apparel company. Right. right and right. it wasn't like, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know the first fucking thing about how to make apparel. And so I needed people to help me with that. Right. And, you know, ultimately it was, it was more pig headedness and the persistence of just going like, I need to understand this about myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to understand if I can take nothing and make a physical product out of it that can be sold worldwide. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's what led to the persistence was I was never going to get the lesson mm -hmm. and that, that I've never gotten better lessons from an experience that I was doing on my own. I get plenty of lessons and experiences all the time when I'm writing stacks mm. and when I was at Warrior Week. And every time I come around, just this general area, San Clemente, right. Dana Point, right, like, right. I'm seeing you, seeing Garrett, like I'm getting some, something <laughs> out of that, right? Yeah. But ultimately, like that experience of building that gave me so much knowledge and insight about myself and about how my current worldview works. Mm -hmm. And I never would have gotten that had it just been easy. Had I picked up the phone once and they said, yeah, no sweat. Right. You right. know, but instead they didn't, they didn't ever hang up on me. They just never answered the phone. And so every day I'm sure they hated me because I'd leave a message every day going like, Hey, this is Brent. I'm going to call you again tomorrow. But if you want to call me back in the meantime, here's my phone number. And I would do that over and over and over again. This was a manufacturer. Yeah. And it was the only manufacturer that I could fucking find. <laughs> that, like, seriously, it's like, it's hard. None of them, like, want to be found. They're, like, hiding under fucking bridges and stuff. And you got to, like, meet me here at midnight with a bag of cash and I'll do it. <laughs> and it was like, I think what the deal is, is, like, a lot of artists get into that industry. Uh, and yeah. then the manufacturers are like, yeah, bro, like, your first purchase order is going to be, like, 75, 80 grand. And people are like, well, wait a second. You need money? And they're just like, fuck, we did all this work, right? And so I'm sitting there like the opposite way. Like, I don't know shit about the art. Yeah. But I've got a briefcase full of money that I'm going to slide across the table to you if you just make this shit for me. Yeah. And ultimately, like, that was the conversation I was trying to have, which even in that, like, that's kind of like an asshole conversation going mm. like, I've got the money. I'm just going to push it across the table for you. You just make my shit, mm. right? And so it was just... um it was just difficult to get somebody to play ball because yeah. it's so untested, right? So um, fast forward to your experience at, at Warrior Week. Uh, you come in and you go through pre-training and um, uh, you come to Warrior Week 61. What was, you know, what did you, what did you find out about yourself, man, in that experience? You know, ultimately, it was a hard lesson that's been more reinforced mm -hmm. lately. But, like, I consider myself right now a recovering asshole. Mm -hmm. Like, not recovered, but recovering. And, you know, I think, like, you know when we would go, like, do our debrief for the day? Yeah. And I'd get up there and I'd do some, like, big, like, fucking presentation <laughs> and shit. And everybody else yeah, is just right. kind of like, this is what I got out of it. You know? And I'm sitting there going, like, trying to be a showman and stuff. Right. And ultimately, dude, what I fucking recognize, and this has been a repeating pattern yeah. over and over again that I'm getting like better at now that I've recognized it. I don't know if I would have ever recognized it without <laughs> Warrior Week. Is just like, I, it, what a fucking asshole to always want people like looking at you. Hmm. It's like a lot of stuff that I've done has been like, look at me. I mm. do it like, you know, I mean, like all the fucking Spartan races, all the shit that I did, like all, like all throughout my life. Yes. It's yes. been going on since eighth grade. Yeah. Where, I just wanted people to look at me. So I recognized, like, in Warrior Week, the biggest revelation was, like, I am a fucking asshole, mm. and I've got to do a lot of work on myself. Because Warrior Week, it just opened the door for me to recognize how much work I needed to do. Sure. It wasn't just, like, you go there, you're fixed, that's it. That's because it. you're never cured of whatever it is that ails you, right? Mm. No matter what, it's always just a matter of more maintenance. Mm. Like, you know how you're doing something sometimes and it works for you? Sure. And then you stop doing it mm. and then you're, it doesn't work anymore. Like, you start feeling worse, whatever. And it's like, it's because you're never cured. Yeah. You've got to consistently do work. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so you come in, you, you have this, uh, uh, it's a big revelation, right? Because, uh, you know, to, to come from a place where you've almost, almost, admire your own actions mm -hmm. um and not that your actions sucked i mean you know you admire your own actions because you get an audience that admires it so you're like i must be good at something if there's an audience that admires it so yeah i fucking admire it and there's nothing wrong with that too because 
uh, in that we found our passion, right? So y- you become good at something and then you become passionate. For example, the Spartan races, you become good at it and you, you win a few, you in, in endure a few, and uh, now it's a passion. Like, it's, it, like you love doing those because you were good at it. If you sucked at it and you continue being sucked at it, at one point it's like, okay, that's not my passion. Um, so, you know, it's not all self-induced. It, it's it's the environment and uh, and the people around us contribute to that. Mm-hmm. And once once that is uh, that is defined, right? This and you had to actually let that go. That's what happened at Warrior. Yep. Like, okay, how do I what? How do I let go of this identity, right? How do I go of this identity of mine that is linked to me? like glorifying myself at any opportunity or chance do I get. And then you look into it and whatever that Warrior Week is and that process is, you you learned to let go at Warrior Week. Now talk to me about post Warrior Week, right? Now you've let go. So what came in? You know, I think what came in more is I recognized that like I had I kept on having this conversation with myself and I did a ton of stacks about this and I didn't feel right with myself mm. for most of like the actions that I was taking throughout my days. And I would stack about old stuff, stack about recent stuff. And what came in was that I feel most right with myself when I'm in service to somebody else, Mm. whether it's a group of people, whether it's an individual person, it can be my wife, it can be my kids. Like rather than thinking about what I can get, I started thinking about what I can give, which sounds cliched, right? No, Ultimately, like that's what filled the space is thinking about like when I have interactions with other people, I'm always I'm thinking about like how can I make that person feel good about whatever it is they're doing, right? right? right. Their day, their actions, their work, whatever. So it changed the way that I approach my staff, mm-hmm. it changed the way that I approach my family, it changed the way that I approach the people that I work out with in the gym, people that I see on the street. And it's not like all the time, like cured, like we were talking about. There's always maintenance that needs to go on with that. But that's what filled the space from like, look at me to look at you. So if you look at, um, you know, post uh, uh, Warrior Week and as you continued inside of the process, uh, multiple trips and, uh, you know, just continuing doubling down on yourself. Uh, one of our training uh, uh, events, uh, something big happened to you, right? You're sitting and, you know, remember the boardroom and you, you go in front of the boardroom and you're getting grilled now by all the other guys. And um, there was a shift that took place inside of you, a massive shift, right? And that changed ultimately the trajectory of uh, what is it that you always wanted? You just recognize it. Fuck, man, this is, uh, this is exactly what I wanted. It's always been here. It's just like, I don't know why I fucked around and danced around it, like just ran for shiny objects elsewhere mm-hmm. when it's always been here. Uh, so what was your experience and, and what did that do to you and where you at with that today, man? Got it. So you were talking about when it was actually a collision you and I had yep. in, uh, in the, it was a production boardroom. Yep. So I'd been fucking around forever because like I, I want to talk. Like I feel like that's ultimately where I want to be. I want to be leading people. I want to be working with those people and coaching them, right? And so I'd been fucking around forever with this whole thing going into big money market or one of the like principles from one of the things that Gary yeah. did in the training was like, doesn't matter if you're solving the wrong problem, just pick a problem and test. And so like I was meditating that morning and I heard this voice going, you should be a parenting coach. And I'm like, really? Really? Like I'm a fucking terrible parent. Like don't, I do, do not get me. But then like that afternoon it was, doesn't matter if you're solving the wrong problem, just solve the fucking problem and test yeah. it. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna try parenting. And so, like, I'm talking about it, like, doing my, all my lives and my podcasts and, like, blogs and all this shit about parenting. And it's just not working. And then I came into that production boardroom and, you know, the, uh, you guys asked me, like, all right, so let's just say you had a microphone and 4,000 people in front of you. Like, what are you going to say? And I'm sitting there, like, spitting it out. And then you're like, no, that's bullshit. I disagree. Like, who says who? Says you? And I'm like, yeah, says me. You know, because we're just talking about, like, how much of a pain in the ass kids are because we're talking about the pain. And you're like, no, 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 that's bullshit. What do you want to talk about? You could talk about anything in the world. And I sat there, and it wasn't even a second. I watched the tape back. Mm. It was instant, like an instant response. I didn't even think about it. Discipline. Yes. Instantly it. And you're like, yes. It was like your eyes lit up going like, I've been trying to tell you this shit for six months, dude. Yeah. Like, why are you just getting this now? Like, you know, and so um, that shift mm. prompted a whole bunch of actions that have been going on over the last, what, four to five months. I forget. Time's gone so slow yeah. since then, right? Yeah. So 
Um, so what the, the action items were coming out of that was one was develop a frame around discipline because I remember saying like, I can't teach it. It's just been there. It's like part of what yeah, I, I remember am. That. And then, you know, Garrett collided with me on that and he's like, no, that's bullshit. You know, like Danielle said the same thing to me about hair. We can do it. Like, you just need to study it. You need to figure out, build the frame, then go get case studies. So I went and I got case studies and I had six people that I pulled through just a six week program that mm -hmm, I did mm -hmm. with them, got the case studies, got the result. What we were working on there was we were working on just discipline in their actions in their daily actions. Some people wanted stuff to happen in their body. Some people wanted stuff to happen in their business. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up measuring it by the number of daily actions that they took ended up with those people with about a 300% increase in their self-discipline as judged nice. by their actions. But since then, what I've been doing is I've now got paying clients that are doing this. And so what I'm pulling them through now is a process where we get more done in 12 weeks than most people do in a year. I see. So it's about acceleration. And so I've got my first couple of clients that are doing that with me. I met with one of them this morning before I flew down here. Awesome. Um, and that's, that's cool. So that, it's still a process uh, from a marketing perspective of making sure that I'm hitting the right notes with people to come into that conversation with me. And Great. that's what I'm working on now. Great. Okay. Talk to us about, man, like what has been, what has been the impact of you as a husband and as a father uh, ever since your, uh, your experience here at Warrior? Like what, what did you bring home? Jeez. Um, my wife would probably be a better answer for that, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I think that she would probably say that the difference has been, it's been both good and bad from her perspective. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the good perspective is that I appreciate what she does a lot more and I'm just able to, I'm just able to share my feelings more. It's mm. funny. We like joke about it because the woman is supposed to be the one that has the emotions and has the feelings. But since warrior and especially with the stack tool, man, just like I'm able to feel stuff mm -hmm. and I'm able to share that with her, which was a big, big problem for me forever. Like I just, I couldn't. And so I had that. And then when it comes to like the type of father, I'm st it's still a rocky road with that. My daughter still just pisses me off like nobody's business. She's yeah. nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I would say that there's more patience involved in it. And so, like, for those two, my wife would say this is good. Where she's having trouble right now is that, you know, she's admitted in the last um, couple of weeks that she's kind of feeling like there's a distance that's happening between us because – she said, it's like, you came back and you're on this trajectory where you're just going up and mm. you're always doing stuff. You know, it's like, I, I've always got something going on, like getting my core four done or stacking or whatever, like when I'm home, either yeah. wake up early, whatever. And she said, I feel like I'm just like doing all these things that are making myself worse. Mm. And so she's uh, concerned about that. And so we started um, talking to a counselor just this week primarily about that and these are people that are familiar with warrior they're familiar with stacking and so they've got her on a stack challenge now nice um yeah so i think that that's going to be really beneficial so i would say overall she would say it's good i think right now she's just having uh, some and that's a that. common a common thing that we've seen like a guys come into warrior and they uh they invest in their greatest version right and as a result of them suddenly uh you know th they just keep rising and rising and rising and going up and there's a feeling that left at home that uh you know you're not picking me up right and it's not like they want to be picked up it's, it's just like you're going s so high that they're like hey you know uh, what about me type of thing and which is good because then it does exactly what, what you kind of your wife does which the inquiry begins your, your stuff, your inquiry also began and you kind of weaseled yourself in by big money marketer, the, the big, the, the, you know, investment into, but then ultimately found out that, oh, fuck, this is Warrior Week 61. Oh, fuck, we're in a pit. Like, all that shit is gone. Like, I'm in an unknown location. It's fucking dark. I don't know where the fuck I am. Like, I'm disconnected from all my stories. I'm disconnected from everything that makes me significant. I'm disconnected from my bank account. Uh, and ultimately, I have an opportunity to face myself in the mirror right now. Or pack my shit and go home. Like, I, I still am free to get the fuck out of here. But then, why did I come here? Right? Why did I go through fucking hell for 30 days just getting prepped for this? And why am I here? And, uh, it, you know, 99.9% .9 of guys in that moment, they'll find the gear to go face the mirror, right? That's the mirror that 
Warrior Week holds, and it's like no matter how much you do, you can't dodge it. There's a 0.01% people that quit that night because they, they, no matter what, they just don't want to face the fucking mirror. And you know what? It's not like they quit. It's just Warrior Week saying like, man, you're a fucking liar. It's just, and you want to be continue being a liar. And uh, something I brought you here that it's not what it is. We've had guys that come in here from religious organization to spy. We've had like crazy people, just like fanatic people coming in. Like, and, and they all got eliminated by the process itself. It's not, it's not crazy. It's like, no problem. And here's a hot soup. You can go back home and ultimately we continue. Now, Warrior Week is virtual. And, uh, you know, so the same thing happens. The same thing happens. There's no, there's no fucking log and there's no fucking like cold and rain and shit like that. But virtually, the environment creates that kind of intensity, which we've now proven that, hey, man, you don't need to physically be here to feel that intensity and that sense of, okay, now the mirror is here and I can't escape the fucking mirror. So, which, which says, Warrior Week was never about me or whoever was running it or, or fucking like the logs or the, the T-shirt. It, it, dude, it's a fucking spirit that moves. And when it like, and it, we've proven with Virtual Warrior Week that you don't need all the fucking shenanigans. The process itself works because a guy is supposed to be there at that time, and it's out of my hand, out of your hand, or anybody else's fucking hand. We thought we were over with Warrior Week, like we said, sixty two is gonna be the last one, and we're gonna shift focus on. That wasn't the case. Like we we're not really in charge. This podcast, you know, last year we we're about to say, okay, we're done with this. You know, we'll focus on something else. None of that stuff is 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 really in our in our control. Um, the beauty of what happens is that the impact that you have just keeps growing. You you ultimately now are having an impact on your wife. You're gonna have an impact on you on, on your daughter. Your wife's probably gonna have an impact on her friend, her cousin, her sister, her brother. Like th- this genealogy of impact gets printed like a tree and the minute you become aware like visually of this tree of impact this is where like it it, you get fueled and contribution kicks in there are more people that you impacted right now than you are aware of but if there would be a tracking and tracing system in place that could spit out this tree of genealogy of impact in front of you imagine how fulfilling that feels there's no doubt how fulfilling you feel about the results of your clients right now yeah. and what they're achieving and how proud you become of the work that you've done on yourself to be able to, to lead from a position of work, not from a position of talk, right? Yeah. Because yeah. And, 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 and that's not different from all the Spartan shit that you've done. <laughs> Dude, you had to do the fucking work or else you couldn't be the guy that actually leads Right. Uh, and, you know, you would have been at, at the bottom of the fucking list, like all the guys that come in for recreational. So you said that you had some updates, like a couple of stories you want to tell me. Yeah. Uh, what is it that you had in heart, man? Because well, this is the spot for it. Exactly. So, I, you know, I've been, so I've been dealing with these limiting beliefs that I have. Mm-hmm. Right. And so one of the things that I keep on coming back to is I'm not right with myself, which is a limiting belief. That's a blocker in there. And so I'm working with this guy that does basically repatterning of memories. Okay. And so working on that basis of I'm not right with myself, we went through this process actually just a couple days ago where we were trying to figure out like what are the memories and the stories that I have and how do we need to shift those in a way that would make it better. Mm-hmm. And so you go through this process where you like feel shit in your body and it's just like you that's there and that's ultimately the trigger and then you ask yourself like take me back to a memory when i felt that before sure and what it is and so actually the first thing that came up was warrior week first day mm. so i remember so you dropped me off in that little suv and you weren't smiling at me yet you were still like fuck this guy like you were like intimidating coach sam <laughs> and uh you know i remember parker handed me like the sandwich and the water and then you're like you're going to be here for six hours. It's going to get dark. It's going to get cold. You got to fight through that shit. Let go of the biggest problem in your life or you're going to bury it in your kids. And I'm like, fuck, I don't want that. Like, mm, I definitely yeah, want to let this go. That. And so it's crazy. I'm sitting there and it, it's like, you know, I mean, this just out in the middle of nowhere. And it's a day where it's like starting to rain. And I sit there and I'm just going like, OK, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this because as you come into Warrior Week, you're trying to think about like, what is the biggest problem that I have? Because I've got a shitload of them. Like, what's the biggest one? Because that's the one I want to tackle. <laughs> And it's crazy. I sat there, and I couldn't think. 
Mm. And so I started meditating, thinking like, okay, something's going to come up. And I kept on meditating. And I have no fucking idea if I was there for six hours, three hours, two hours, 20 minutes. And I'll never know. And I never want to know. Mm. But what was crazy was the whole time I was sitting there and I couldn't think. I couldn't think of a problem. I was just having what I believed to be an amazing meditation session. Mm -hmm. Didn't have anything. And I was pissed. I was pissed because it was like, this is what I fucking came here for, was to deal with this problem that I've got, whatever it is, and nothing's coming up for me. Like, even the thought, like, I'm not thinking about anything was there. And so I was pissed. And so as we go through and try to repattern that memory in a way that serves me better mm -hmm. in terms of feeling right with myself is that I just need to be able to accept what the universe is giving me in that moment and say, this is exactly what I need right now. Not what I'm supposed to do, not what I'm told to do. It's simply, you just got to go with what you're given. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately it. Um, and so that was just like super powerful for me this week. Um, the next one is you go back because it's like, okay, give me another memory. It was about Spartan Race. Mm -hmm. So I did my first Spartan Race in 2014 and I did not like it. Okay. Like, I okay. didn't have a good time doing it. And I actually never found a ton of joy doing them. <laughs> but ultimately, like recovering asshole, I wanted to do it because other people wouldn't. Like other people wouldn't even do one. And I'm like, all right, motherfucker, I'm going to do 24. Mm -hmm. And so I would just keep on going. Right. I remember just suffering through that first one because it was raining and it was cold and you're just always muddy. And there's like, you know, every you're chafed everywhere. Like it just sucks. It's a suffer fest. And so then like at the last obstacle, you jump over fire and then you cross the finish line and you're like, for whatever reason, you're like, oh yeah, fuck yeah. Let's do another one. Like <laughs> sign me up again. Right. And I never found joy in it. But what the driving force in doing those, and I mean, I was good at them just because I'm just, I was just a decent athlete. Yeah. But um, the driving force behind doing more of them was, one, prove something that I'm going to do that you're not going to do. Mm -hmm. And then, two, I'm going to talk about this, and you guys are going to look at me. Uh -huh. Right? It was an attention thing. It was nothing about joy for myself. Hmm. It was nothing about, like, happiness in that spot. And so to repattern that whole thing, I would try it once. And intuitively, if I felt like if it was more than a six out of 10, like on the rating scale, mm -hmm. then I'd try another one and say like, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Like, let's, let's do this. Maybe it's gonna be fun. If it's below a, f a six, which it was, it was like a three intuitively, yeah. like I hated that thing. Was, yeah. Um, oh, you wouldn't go back and do it again. You wouldn't, because there's no reason to do anything that doesn't give you a nine or a 10 out of 10 in terms of enjoyment when it comes to the things that you're just doing extracurricularly, That's right? That's true. And it was, it was, it was about, it was about me, mm -hmm. like the whole thing. Like there was a word on the whiteboard behind you that I look at, it's ego, yeah. right? I mean, and that's ultimately what that is. It's like your ego tells you, I can do this. Nobody else will do this. I'll do yeah. this. You know what's funny about ego? It reminded me, uh, uh, remind me of a story. I think I've told this story, but I'll, I'll tell it once again. Um, there, there is a, there's this big Indian wedding. You know how Indian weddings are just like yeah. fucking crazy. There's like 500 people, yeah. and and so there's a, there's a guy you know smoking cigarette outside, and and there's this guy that passes by in front of the main gate, in front of the main door, and uh and the guy's drunk and smoking cigarette, and he he like kind of like goes and goes, oh you're this guy, you're you're this guy, you're you know so famous and this. The guy's fucking drunk, right? So he pulled him in, I come inside. You're on the bright side's family. Yeah, everybody's been talking about. So he, he continues talking about this to another guy and another guy, and it just gets amplified as as a reputation of this guy's of being, you know, uh, this big shot, this big actor, big rich dude, actors, famous guy that's, you know, that is a very close family member of the bright side. And for the next hour or so. Like this, this thing, like everybody's talking about this guy. Like, again, this guy was just passing by and pull him in and he goes, he goes, okay, like, fuck, I'm getting all this fucking glory. So he goes, so for the next hour, hour and a half, this, this guy is like the, the topic of the fucking wedding, right? And so it gets so, so influential in this wedding that they actually ask for, they actually ask for, for him to come on the stage. And like, hey, everybody wants you to come and sing and come on the stage and da, da, da. So when they ask him to come up, right, and they announce who he is and so on and so on, he was nowhere to be found. And so the, the moral of the story is that, you know, when, when, you know, your ego can take a lot of fucking noise and can become the guy, the most popular guy at the wedding. 
But ultimately, he was nobody because he was no one to be found. So when they ask for the ego, <laughs> he yeah. disappeared. Yeah. Right? So uh, it, that's how ego is. It comes in and it creates this massive amount of turbulence and, and, and it makes it all about you. And when you're asked to see the ego, nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Like literally nowhere to be found, nowhere to be. And that's why often like, he's like, fuck, man, that was all my ego. Like, where the fuck is it right now to back me up? Nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. So uh, talking about what you talked about, like going in the memory and... and um, Repatterning. Repatterning. Uh, it's beautiful, the work that you're doing. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the ways to really look at it as, as us as human and, and what is, you know, how we operate is, unfortunately, we live too much in our memory, not enough in our imagination. We used to live in our imagination when we were a kid. Six, seven year old, your daughter right now, she's fully in her imagination. Number one, there's not that much memory. Number two, <laughs> that there is literally imagination, what you can imagine. And so, uh, as we get older and as we become adults, we let go of living in our imagination and we hold on to living in our memories. And that's ultimately what, what, why we are so attached to the past and so attached to what happened and so. Um, so much in focusing in, in what, what took place. And one of the things that you experienced is at Warrior Week, like you were forced to look into the problem of the fast. And you were told to shut the fuck up and just be here now, which is rule number three, right? So uh, literally, that is the biggest fucking listen. Because if you think about it, no matter how much, you could have spent those six hours, 16 hours, 26 hours, you'll never know. Uh, you could have spent all those hours figuring out all this stuff in your memory in the past, but you were given the, like, the gift of Warrior Week, which is like, be here now. Like, does it really fucking matter? Mm -hmm. that, like, does it, like in Christianity, they, they talk about being reborn, reborn and reborn. It's like, okay, bro, what does it mean? 90% of Christians won't know what the fuck it means. They just repeat some fucking thing that a pastor would tell them to do and all oh, reborn, oh, come back to life. No, it's, it's pretty fucking simple. What it says is like today has a potential only if you let go of yesterday. Like forgiveness is the name of the game. Forgive yourself so that you can create today. And those that don't create today, those that don't let go, those that, that don't fully, fully apply the presence of today now, right? They never truly get to see the glory of God fully, right? So th th this simple conversation, bro, has become so fucking complex that now you need 900 people to translate to you what does it mean to be reborn. No, this guy. no, like it's simple. We get to be born every single day. Realistically, we don't know where the fuck we are at night when we sleep. I don't know if you do know. No, 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 dude. Like I know your mind's still going. Yeah, something the whole is all time. Yeah. Like you're doing all sorts of shit. Some shit is asleep. happening. Yep. Some shit is happening. Yep. So I, I really like if I want to play a little game with myself. I'm like, fuck. You know, maybe I was dead last night. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I'm, I'm like, today's a fucking new day. Yeah. But the problem is that I hold on to yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like it's those experiences shape what you believe your future mm. experiences are going to be like. And so that's what fucks you up. Like, that's why yeah. I feel like, and I, I had to look at that hard too, because you get to this stuff and you have these failures, these setbacks, right? That clothing company didn't fucking work. I spent yeah. 300 grand on that and I couldn't figure out how to make it work. <laughs> that wasn't the universe's fault. That wasn't a vendor's fault. That wasn't the fucking customer's fault. That was my fault because I couldn't fucking figure it out. Right. As I go back into a game where now I'm spending money on ads, same type of shit I was doing before, I had to have a hard ass check with myself to be like, yo, dude, that experience that you had is a building block. It's not a fucking anchor. It doesn't need to hold you back because what it does is it puts you in a better position right. to do something more. It's just like all the shit from Warrior Week. Like, that it's like you can use all the stuff that happened to you as an anchor and say, like, it's impossible for me to like become this different version of myself or even to see anything about myself because I'm, I'm tied to this fucking anchor. Right. But ultimately, when you're able to use it as a block and go like, dude, I was a fucking asshole. I was an asshole for 40 years. And you use that in a way that allows you to build from it. Right. And that's exactly what you're talking about. It's like you can't you can't have just the past be your guide for the future. Right. Because it's not. It's where you've been. It's the trail of breadcrumbs you leave behind. It has nothing to do with what's happening in front of you. Correct. But that's all we fucking see. Man. So well said. Um and 
so many so many changes, man. It just almost feels like it's fucking like ages ago, fucking Warrior Week, man. Oh yeah. Especially with this fucking COVID thing hitting and like kind of slowing down uh interactions and back and forth. And so if you look back at your life today, right, and where you at and how you operate, I know you guys are down here for a little vacation and that's fucking awesome, man. Um what what message would you have for a uh, a Brent or somebody exactly like you, exactly where you were, right when you were fucking around with B, B, B big money marketer and mm -hmm. like that guy, right? Yeah. What, like if that guy is listening or one of our one of our audience is just kind of like you know this is not the most popular podcast. The, the intention of this is not to be popular. The intention of this, and I repeat it again, is really to pierce a man's heart. So if you're sitting there as part of the audience and you feel like the way Brent described himself is a friend of yours, a man that you know, just take the fucking podcast, forward it to him, and assuming that that is forwarded to that guy, and that guy is right now listening, right, and like literally the brother that listened, pay it forward, and that guy is listening right now. What would be your message to that guy? <laughs> well, wait, let me get an Excel spreadsheet or like a fucking Venn diagram to figure out that interaction between person and person and person. You know, so the message, I mean, the message ultimately is that, shit, man, it's like, no matter how much you protest, you are 100% resp uh, responsible for everything that happens in your life. Hmm. And that comes to the decisions you make about yourself, right? It's not somebody else's fault. It's not that... Somebody isn't giving you the respect that you deserve. It's not that your wife isn't doing what you want her to do. It's not that you're not making the sales you're supposed to make. It's not anybody else's fault. It's not anybody else's responsibility. It's your responsibility. And so the first thing that has to go down with that, and this is ultimately what the guy that you described needs to hear, is that you have to look at yourself and you have to do it without a bullshit lens on it hmm. and just accept truths about yourself whether they're bad or whether they're good you just have to be willing to accept them because if you can't accept them there's no place to go forward you can have all these goals and all this shit you want to do but the navigation in your brain doesn't know where you are now mm -hmm. and because it doesn't know where you are now there's no way regardless of what kind of fucking plan what kind of strategy you have you're never going to be able to get to where you ultimately want to go in your life if you can't acknowledge where you are and you're never going to acknowledge where you are without asking yourself the question and answering it honestly, like answering it honestly, hmm. even if it's just looking in the fucking mirror hmm. in your bathroom by yourself and just answering the question honestly, and just take what that is and accept it. Don't try to like defend yourself for it at all. Because I think that that's probably a big mistake that I right. made for a long time. I tried to defend myself, going like, no, 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 that was actually not asshole behavior. That was the behavior of the kind of guy I want to be. It was just these other people that were doing right. it, right? Right. Don't defend yourself. Just fucking accept it. Beautiful message. And, uh, you know, the thing about this message is that, uh, you know, 80% of guys will hear it in one ear, and it would skip and be from the other ear. Uh, and that's why experiences such as Worry Week are there. For you to grab on to a message that you just said and analyze that message for you and like tactically apply it other than simply saying, you know what, Brent is right, man. What the guy said is so right. And then tomorrow go back and do what the fuck you were doing and then mm -hmm. forget. So uh, experiences such as Worry Week are there. And now these experiences are at the tip of your finger. Like we're talking about virtual Worry Week. Like between right now between you listening virtually to this audio and as well as you being part of an interview or part of a process is literally a couple of buttons or a couple of buttons on your keyboard. So Virtual Warrior Week is here now. Is uh, you know It's optimized so that you can have access to it. It's still the same fucking process. You go through the interview, and uh, we got to figure out why you want to come in. If you're why strong enough, you're admitted in. Uh, but it's uh, much less from a price perspective and, and uh, restriction of traveling and so on. So if you feel like this message really resonated with you, uh, the place to go is worryweekplus.com. Uh, the place to watch more of these kind of podcasts and brothers such as Brett. And, uh, and he'll be back. We'll have more of updates from you. Um, it's worryweeknow.com. You can listen to hundreds of podcasts on this. But really, the place that you need to go and take some action right now is worryweek plus plus dot com apply for worry week and maybe you'll be you know sitting here uh, very soon uh, sharing your story i do want to thank you uh, being here on your vacation and yeah. being here um and ultimately like really bringing joy because it's been a couple of months that uh, no one really came in here 
right? So all the all the podcasts were done like remotely. So having you here is just like energetically pretty fucking awesome, man. To to kickstart these podcasts in person. Um, I do have another podcast today later on. It's digital, but like this one just feels amazing because you know it's the fucking background and the whole thing, and it's just we're back on it. So Brett, thank you so much. Any final words, bro? No, man. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I love being down here. All right, beautiful. We'll see you soon, gentlemen. WarriorWeekPlus.com, WarriorWeekNow.com. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.